Guys, we're looking at implementing DFS, distributed file system. Now, like I've said before, I asked you guys to set up two servers, which you've done. Is that not correct? We have our server one, which is our main server, and we have our server, um, I actually call this server four, uh, which is our second server, which will be participating in our DFS um, configuration. Like the scenario says, it says a corporation has deployed a new branch office. And it says this office has a single server to support branch office staff requirements. You must configure DFS to avoid the need of performing backup remotely. A departmental file share in the branch office will be replicated back to the head office for centralized backup. And the branch data will be replicated to the branch office server to provide quicker what? Access. That is a nice thing about, that's one of the nice things I like about my practicals. We use a scenario to accomplish a task. Are we together? Yeah, now let's start, we're going to be doing, installing this, the DFS rule services. We're going to configure DFS namespace, and we're going to configure DFS what? Replication. So in success one, we're asked to install the DFS rule service in server one and in server four. Now, you guys remember we talked about um, a remote server installation, is that not correct? Or rather, remote server management. Now, why do, why do we have to go to server 4 and install the role when I can easily do that directly from where? From server 1. Are we together? So, the first thing we need to do is to go to server 1, which is our main server. Now, we go to where we have, look, uh, we go to the dashboard. Then you have where it says, um, Add other servers to manage. Did you see that? So click on that. Add other servers to manage. So we click find now. Now you notice that my server 4 is there. Is that not correct? Now I don't know which one you guys have. Yeah, you guys have server 3. Now I'm not creating a server group. I'm only just adding servers to be what? Manage. That is why if you go, if you notice, if you go to all servers, all servers are all the servers you are managing. Server group is something different. Okay. Server group is just like simplifying the way of managing the servers. But managing a server is different from creating the server group. When I create a server group, I have a specific server to a particular group that I manage. But it will also be part of all what? Servers. That's why if you notice, we cancel now. If I go to all servers, this shows me all the servers I'm managing. Whether they are part of server groups or not. Are we together? Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. Now click on add other servers to manage. Now if I click find now, because when I did Windows deployment, I actually used the second method by naming and approving. Are we together? So I named the server, server uh, SVR4, then joined the server to the default location of my OU, then automatically when uh, Windows deployment was done, Everything was done for me. The server was joined to the domain. It gave it a name. I didn't have to do any other thing anymore. I went together. Now, let's click on server 4. Then you notice we click on uh, the, uh, the arrow button, which has added it now. Then I'll click OK. Then, of course, it's going to scan through. So we just wait for that to finish refreshing, and the server should be added. OK, now it's done. So when I go to all servers, you notice that server 4 will now appear there. Is that not correct? Now, the IP address on server 4, it's 192.168.1.3. I don't know that if that is yours as well. Yeah, it's the same. Now, remember, this is a dynamic IP address. Are we together? Now, can we go to the tools? Go to DSCP. Expand the DSCP server. Expand it. Go to IP version 4. Then expand your scope for IP address list. And that's server 4 there. Is that not correct? Huh? Of course, you see your server 4 there, right? Now, if you right click, did you see add to reservation? Did you see the button by right clicking? Did you see add to reservation? If you click add to reservation, it will say list converted successfully to what? Reserved. And it's what? Active. <laughs> Are we together? We just statically assign the IP address, literally. 
So this DSCP server should not give this IP address to any other person except what? Server 4. I don't know what name you called yours. Are we together? Are we together? Okay. So if, if remember, server systems, server systems should not be dynamically assigned IP address. The IP address should always be what? Static. For constant what? Communication. So we just statically assign 192.168.1.3 to server 4. So whether the server is off for the next five weeks, if we put it back on in the next five months, it will still give it what? 192.168.1.3. what? Three. Are we together? That's one of the nice things about server 2012. I can easily just add any computer to reservation. That's why if I go to reservations now, I will see that server 3 is one of them now. Did you see that? It's one of them. Okay, I'm going to close that. That is what I wanted to do. Now, let's go and add, let's go to the uh, practicals. We're asked to add the role for, um, we're asked to add, install the DFS role services on server 1 and server 2. So, task 1, we're asked to install the DFS role services on server 1. And this can be found under the file and storage Root services up. Now remember, when we install the five uh, storage services, remember there's, there's so many rows services underneath. Yeah. Remember, we have rows and we have rows services. Yeah. So we don't need to go all the way to the wizard where we have to add rows and services. All we just need to do is to go to. Can we go to? Um, can we go to server one? Click on server one here. Now, if you screw down, if you screw down, you will see row. And features. Is that correct? Huh? Yes. Now, did you see on the task there? Did you see where it says add rules and features? Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, click on that. Click next. Remember, it says destination server not selected, right? Click next. How many servers do you have there? Huh? Two. You have how many server? Two. Okay, let's start with server one. Can you select server one? Click next. Okay. Now we go to file and what? Storage words. Okay, expand it. Then we expand file. Now, did you see the word DFS? <laughs> huh? Now, we are asked to install the DFS namespace and the DFS what? Replication. So we check DFS namespace. We add the features. We select DFS replication. Are we together? Now, click Next. Next again. And, of course, for best practice, if it's a remote server, we select that button and we click what? Install. So let's wait for it to get installed. We close now, and we'll notice that um, the DFS is not installed. If you go to Tools, you'll see that DFS management is there. Is that not correct? Yes, now let's go to Server 4. Now let's screw up. Let's go to Server 4. But before I move to Server 4, can we log into Server 4? Just log in and make sure that DFS management is not there so that we can see that everything worked perfectly. Let's just make sure that DFS management is not there. So we go to tools. We don't find DFS management here. Is that not correct? Okay. Now let's go to server one. Now I've selected server four. We're together. Remember, whenever you change, for example, if I come to server one, you notice that the event changes. If I go to server four, the event changes. Then if you screw down, you notice that under rows and features, the server row on server 4 is quite few compared to what? So, server 1. So click on add rows and features now. Click next. Next again. Then we select what? Server what? Server 4. Huh? Yeah, server 4 or whatever name you call yours. Then you click next. Okay, selecting it. So it's just waiting for that con uh, connection to be established. 
So we expand file and storage services. We expand file. Then we select DFS replication and DFS what? Namespace. Is that not correct? So we click next. We click next. Of course, if it needs to be restarted, we select it. And we click what? Install. That's all. So we just wait for it to go through, get installed, and we'll proceed. Okay, let's click close. Now let's go to the server now. Let's come here on tools. Do you find DFS there? Is DFS there now on your on the second server? Yes, yes. Bingo. Are we together? So guys, uh task two. Okay, we've just finished exercise one, installing the DFS root services on both server one and server two, and we're able to do a remote installation by doing the installation from where? From server one. So I'm going to stop that now.